I'm a little late, but happy new, new soup! Su The first new Super Mario Bros. game on the DS is definitely a lot more original than people give it credit for. The effect that its sequels have had on the Mario branding can be a whole topic in and of itself, but it also kind of made people lose sight of how quirky some parts of the original game really were, and looking back at its development, I'm surprised it didn't get any weirder. NSMB is one of the Nintendo games whose development process I want to know more about the most right next to Sticker Star. Being the first original 2D Mario platformer in 14 years and built right off of a Mario 64 remake of all things, the prototype footage definitely feels more like a 2D Mario game with the 3D Mario moveset, kind of like an inverse 3D land. Still, some of the wackier level design did end up making its way into the final game, and this is what I want to touch on today. I'm going to be talking about and ranking every unique level gimmick in the original New Super Mario Bros. What do I mean by that exactly? Well, let's set the criteria. First, it has to be an object in the level with its own graphic asset and or unique gameplay mechanic. Second, it can at most only appear in two levels in the original New Super Mario Bros. This rules out the most common new elements like the Mega Mushroom, obviously, or this spinny platform, which is fun but the designers love to use a whole lot. I'm also specifying the two level limit because as it turns out, quite a few mechanics only appear in two levels and nothing more. And third, it must not have appeared in any previous or following 2D Mario platformers, or at least has to be mechanically different from any similar objects. This will probably bring up some grey areas in my choices, but I'll explain them as I go along. As we'll see, anything that's brought in from something else like Mario 64 DS is fair game as long as it does not reappear in future 2D platformers. I will also not be covering the bosses, even though these are some of the more unique ones in 2D Mario, nor anything specific to the multiplayer modes. And lastly, I'm simply ranking these subjectively based on the mix of concept, level design, and memorability. You can obviously have your own rankings and opinions and are welcome to share them in the comments. Got all that? Then let's begin starting from World 1. World 1 introduces some of the more common gimmicks in the game, most notably the Mega Mushroom, but doesn't get a unique gimmick until 1-A, the very first water level in the game. An auto-scrolling water level. And it's Sushi from Mario 64. They're just kinda there, and they die with a single fireball. Yeah, this goes in D tier. Next up, World 2. 2-2 has these red platforms which resemble the platforms from Mario Bros. that you can hit underneath to topple enemies. They also appear in 8-6 as well, in an arguably more fitting setting since the screen even wraps around like in the original game. I don't know if it's a deliberate reference, but it's a nice callback regardless. I'd put them in B tier. Moving on to 2-3, which is probably one of the more memorable levels as it's the only level in the game to use a sewer theme. However, this sewer theme would be eventually reused in 6-3 of New Super Mario Bros. Wii, so for our purposes, it just barely misses the criteria to be a unique level gimmick. Though these sewer covers, on the other hand, are never used again anywhere else. They're an interesting take on the semi-solid platform, allowing you to pass through them both ways, and they also make that very satisfying sound effect. A solid B tier. 2-4 gives us one of the level gimmicks with the most potential, actual deforming terrain. Given that the 2D Mario games have always been associated with simple tile-like level design compared to more contemporary platformers, this is a welcome change of pace. Sadly, in both of their appearances, including the World 2 castle, they're tied to being triggered by switches and all they do is raise or lower the ground and enable some physics-based tomfoolery. But they're still one of the more memorable gimmicks in the game and it would honestly be very cool to see them return and have larger effects on the overall level design. Would have been S tier if they were used more creatively in-game, but into A it goes. Unrelated, but 2-4 also gives us the only time Hammer Brothers appear in the level as enemies rather than just being extra obstacles on the world map. Just thought it'd be neat to mention. Next is the World 2 Tower, which features multiple unique gimmicks, the first being this rotating set of platforms that seem very familiar. Yeah, they're basically the ones from Mario 64. They are pretty basic, and I think later takes on the four rotating platforms concept have done it better, including the ones that you manually paddle through water, as well as the Resnor wheels and NSMB2. Yes, I'm finally bringing that one time they brought back Resnor into the public conscious. Either way, these platforms just feel a lot quainter by comparison, even though they're still technically a unique object. I'll just put them in D tier. Then, over in this bonus room, there's a moving claw that requires you to keep wall jumping to move up a chasm. It kind of looks a little bosh together, like why is it just multiple striped blocks? But it's still a nice mechanic that I'm surprised hasn't been reused in later games. Maybe it's a bit too challenging to grasp for the casual audience, but hey, I like me some challenging mechanics. Either way, it's an A tier. 
Lastly, the tower also introduces these spinning blocks that spawn when you hit this red block. The same block also appears in the World 8 Castle where it controls the placements of moving platforms. It's a decent platforming challenge, but they probably could have used it in some puzzle solving situations as well to spice things up. It's B tier for me. World 2 really just keeps on giving because up next is 2 5. I think a lot of people recognize this level layout. Introducing Block Hoppers, one of the Mario enemies of all time. Just look at them, how could you hate them? Maybe you do hate them if you never realized that they jump in time to the boss and the music instead of randomly. I did not know that for the longest time. While they are most likely inspired by Pile Driver Micro Goombas from Mario 3, they're definitely a much better design and absolutely deserve to return. Also, their Chinese name translates to Masquerading Brick Killer. A tier. Would have been an S tier if you guys weren't such a pain in the butt for younger me to deal with. Moving on to 2-6, it's a fairly standard airborne auto-scroller with moving platforms and tons of piranha plants. It's certainly a distinct level theme, but not really something to write home about. Maybe you could get hit, lose your fire flower, and the rest of the level would be a pain in the butt. But then, right at the very end of the level, you see this. This literally happens nowhere else in the game. S tier. World Free Time. 3-A features Skeeters, their first appearance in a 2D Mario game, and one of the many variations throughout the series. I have no idea why they keep changing their appearance every game. Unlike their 3D brethren though, these guys can poop bombs into the water. That's something. They also appear in 8-2, but most of the time you can dodge them pretty easily while swimming, so uh, C tier. Next, 3-C. So this level features the spike base, which is an enemy that is unique to this game. But later games give its exact same behavior to the Porcupuffer, so it doesn't really fit rule free of my criteria for being mechanically distinct. On the other hand, there are these falling bridge tiles. They use the bridge graphic from the beach tile set, but have a unique function of falling when you run across them. And they're mechanically different from donut blocks because they fall immediately. I have no idea if these count. Uh, if they do, then I guess they're just in D tier? Can we just move on? Let's just go to World 4. 4-1 starts things off with a bang by introducing us to who else but Dory from Super Mario 64, who is friend-shaped and is a very good boy who just wants to help carry you across the poison lake. I also just realized you can shoot fireballs off his neck to reach the scuttlebugs above, which is pretty cool. And then in 4-6, our good boy becomes a big boy. It's only been 5 levels, what did you eat? Either way, very good dinosaur, he just wants a friend, I would die for him, S tier. 4-2 introduces some new mushroom platforms. Now, mushroom platforms are nothing new throughout the entire series. There are a whole bunch of bouncy and stretchy mushroom platforms that appear in later games. But these ones in 4-2 are unique in that they keep tilting and sliding you off them, all the while making super satisfying noises. It's probably a decent challenge for a casual player to try staying on these. They also appear in the 6-B ice level where they let you do this. That's pretty neat. I'll put them in B tier. 4-3 features Unagis. Get amore. Get it? Amore il? <laughs> I say the funny. Can't finish the reference because I'm not allowed to swear. Yeah, they're kind of just more of an annoying obstacle with anything, since both of the levels they appear in are auto-scrolling underwater levels and we all know those are a joy to play. Though I'd still love to see them brought back into 2D Mario with the Odyssey design, going all in on the terrifying aesthetic. For now, it's C tier for me. Up next is our first ghost house of the day, so this ought to be good. The World 4 Ghost House features these platforms on a stick that are basically one-way gates but look pretty cool while being them. B tier. What's more important is that immediately afterwards, one places you in front of this absolute unit. These are Balloon Boos. They shrink when they chase you and inflate themselves when you stare at them. This kickstarted someone's fed A tier. But wait, this level still has one more gimmick to grace us with. Enter this bonus room and hit the switch and there's a bunch of question blocks on strings. They also appear later in 6-3 where they can't sit still for some reason. It's a completely random concept that can get a little annoying, but I guess that's kind of the point. I still like them enough to put them in B tier though, it's just so silly looking. Over in 4-5, we have bob -ombs. Wait, no, I mean we have these skate-style platforms, which definitely act like gates. Still unique, but there's nothing else to add, really. These are C tier. 
Moving on to World 5. Right as you start 5-1, there are Snow Spikes, one of the few NSMB enemies that keeps appearing in modern Paper Mario for no reason. While you can say that spikes in Super Mario Maker 2 can also throw snowballs in the winter level theme, they do work slightly differently than Snow Spikes. And most importantly, in Mario Maker, the snowballs they throw are completely harmless and don't get larger as they roll. Compared to New Soup, where combined with the other main gimmick of 5-1, which is the snow, it just adds up to become obstacles that despite being unique, aren't really fun. They're both kinda just C tier for me. 5-2 is a very weird ice slash underground level with spike tops all over the place. But if you carry this spring to this gold pipe and enter it, you encounter a money bag from Mario 64. It just kinda waits patiently for you until you chase it into a corner and literally take its life. Same goes for its only other appearance in 6-3, but it's just a tad more challenging. They are technically superseded by coin coffers in NSMB2 with a slightly different red coin related function, but these guys are an objectively inferior design don't at me. Money bags are very nice, they're B tier. Next, 5-3 features a ton of icy slopes, but also these guys, snailicorns. Remember them? They are basically the weird cousins of bullies, but instead of pushing you around, they simply have spikes. Funnily enough, their internal name in the game's files is identical to the Japanese name of bullies. Honestly, directly dropping the bully mechanics into this level would probably still work considering the ice theme, but sure, I'll take the weird snail people with barely visible lips. Yes sir, right away. I just need to enhance this on the computer. B tier. The World 5 Ghost House features bruisers and staircases, which would go on to appear in other games. But near the end of the room, there's this striped platform. I call it the platform that pretends to be a normal platform until it... Haunted platforms are a neat concept that has come back in later games, such as these ones that are carried by Peepas in NSMB2, but I'm counting this striped platform as a distinct thing, seeing as it does the... and the... It's a nice A-tier gimmick and has nice potential to be even wackier and used more often. Three more worlds to go. 6-A takes place in a desert and features whirlwinds from Mario 64, doing basically the same thing they did in that game. They're fine, just kind of a different version of the spinny platforms when you think about it. C-tier, I guess. Alright, for some reason I kinda dig 6-3. All it really has going for it are lots of pipes and funny question blocks like the ones on strings I mentioned earlier. They put spikes on a question block, innovation has peaked. I don't know, just the combination of these elements in particular make this level pretty memorable to me. But as for the spiked question blocks on their own, they might seem like a simple concept, but it's still a neat subversion on a giant staple of Mario games that I'm surprised it hasn't been repeated since. What can I say, I dig the idea of different variations of question blocks. A tier. The second tower in World 6 is just a regular gauntlet of conveyor belts. But right at the very end, the battle of Bowser Jr. takes place on this tilting iron platform, which later also shows up in 8-5. Well, they're tilting platforms. Not much to say, though I do appreciate this nice little puzzle with the Koopa shell here. Uh, C tier. Next, 6-B features these swinging canes, which also briefly appear in 7-1. They're serviceable, even though the movement is a lot more stiff compared to the ropes and vines from later games. It's a lot harder to keep jumping from one to another, but at least being able to move along tracks makes them more distinct. Guess that about evens out the good and bad and puts them in B tier. And while we're at World 7, let's keep going! The World 7 Ghost House is great. You get a choice between multiple doors with only one being the correct path forward, which means that statistically there will have been players to have played through this level without ever encountering the gelatin, ectoplasm, ghost jello, whatever you want to call it. Solid pit? This actually sort of resembles the jelly that can be found in one stage in Yoshi's Story, where you have to very similarly dig into it for items. And like in Yoshi's Story, it's also used only in one level and then never again. I don't get it, but I'm very glad it exists. Please put more wacky dynamic terrain in 2D Mario games. A tier. But wait, the same ghost house also gives us scr scr scrupulous fingers. <coughs> These are called phantom hands. The job is to literally just sit there and point at hidden blocks. Like, look, there it is. You can stand on it and they go, Baby man, little baby, little baby man, little baby, baby, baby man, little baby, baby man. This is simultaneously the dumbest and best gimmick, S tier. 
7-2 gives us a nice little throwback to an old level gimmick. This aero platform feels like a callback to the rising aero platforms from Mario 3, but does work a little differently where you walk around on it instead of jumping to change direction. I guess my only complaint is that it could be a little faster? And I also guess it's sort of spiritually succeeded by these tilt control platforms in the later games which I feel are better, so for now these are like C tier. 7-3 is themed to Wigglers. Can you tell? Now later NSMB games have also used the concept of giant wigglers, but using a whole giant wiggler as the terrain is most definitely a unique case. I'm also sure that this is one of if not the longest wiggler in Mario history with a whopping 28 segments not counting the head. But hey, this is still a fresh idea for a semi-auto scroller. Oh yeah, and when you grab a star it does this. I don't know why it does that, but that's very cool. A tier for sure. While we're on that topic, 7-A is memorable for being a great throwback to the pipe maze from Mario 3, but also gives us squigglers. Tiny wigglers that crawl on pipes and act all cute until you go excuse me and just... Well, at least they reappeared in a spin-off, too bad it was not meant to be, squigglers killed Alpha Dream, C tier. The end is in sight as we move on to World 8. There aren't a whole lot of unique gimmicks left aside from the multiple level ones mentioned earlier, but there isn't another exclusive mechanic until 8-8 which gives us a new bob -omb species. Okay, I'm gonna throw away my bias here. These are cab bombs, bob -ombs with lips. Okay, why are they green on the bottom? Who knows? They are a lot more sensitive to fire than normal bob -ombs, lighting up immediately if hit with it. It can actually catch you off guard if you aren't familiar with them, but other than that, they're just a neat twist on regular bob -ombs. And then Nintendo said, let's bring it back for Mario Golf World Tour and then never again. This company's weird. Anyway, B tier. Without the bias. And finally, we arrive at the final castle, and I think you know what I'm gonna talk about. You enter this room for the first time and go, whoa, hey, that door is upside down, so you hit the question switch and... Okay, I don't care how jank that looked, it was still super cool to a younger me. And even though on a technical level, the game really is just loading two different versions of a room, they play the illusion off well enough to still make it a very memorable part of the game. Very much a well-deserved S tier, and it makes me wonder why gravity hasn't been messed with more often in the 2D platformers. Unless they didn't want to take the spotlight away from Galaxy. But hey, that had some nice 2D gravity switching sections going for it too, so maybe the idea did stick around. And that's the whole ranking. There were obviously some parts that you might have wanted to rank completely differently. Heck, this was the original ranking I put together based on my memories before I even started the script, and changed later on as I wrote about each gimmick and thought more about the balance between memorability and gameplay effect. So if you're interested in ranking them yourself, I do have a link to the tier list template right in the description. And if there are other mechanics in the game that you feel deserves to fit the criteria, feel free to let me know in the comments as well. At the end of the day, no matter the ranking, the main takeaway is that all of these are unique concepts from just one 2D Mario platformer that for the most part have not resurfaced since 15 years ago. Which is a shame considering the current reception towards the safer design of the NSMB series nowadays. What these things have shown is that it'd be amazing to see a new 2D Mario platform game get the same amount of dynamic and unique gimmicks as a modern Donkey Kong Country game. The original DS game in general may still have a lot of the common world themes and tropes that have stuck with the NSMB series to this day, but maybe it's time for Nintendo to look back on some of its individual levels, or even stuff like the Mario Land games, as a reminder of the potential that 2D Mario can reach without relying on them. Or if they could just do bonker stuff in every level. NSMB U still feels like a quarter step in this regard, like making Peach's Castle the final area is cool and all, but you basically just put a coat of lava over it anyway. Meanwhile, look back to the original and you'll find level designers who had the bravery to ask the important questions like, what if we put the single buzzy beetle here upside down by default and nowhere else?